If you own a Nikon Z camera and want to capture amazing cinematic imagery, but haven't done this one thing, you're missing out. In this video, I'm going to show you the simple adjustments that will transform your footage from looking lackluster to epic. And the crazy thing is that this secret sauce takes less than three minutes to implement, requires no downloads, is completely free, and will work on any Nikon camera, and probably any other brand as well. And I will show you how to use this new ability for maximum cinematic effect. But first, we need to ask, what is it that makes a $100,000 cinema camera different from a $600 DSLR? And at first glance, it seems like almost everything. But ultimately, it has to do with the flexibility that that $100,000 camera gives you in capturing light, shadow, and your ability to finesse and fine tune that footage in post, which is its dynamic range and raw log recording. And cameras like the Z30 don't come with the ability to record log footage built in. You can, however, create a simulated log profile that allows you to take advantage of a wider dynamic range using the camera's custom color profiles. And I've been using and developing my own custom log color profile for years. And it's crazy easy to set up. Let me show you. All right, so first thing to know is that you actually have two sets of color profiles on your camera. You've got a different set for your photography mode than you do for your video mode. So make sure you're actually in your video mode when you're following these instructions. So hit the menu button and navigate to your camera menu. And at the bottom of the first section, you're going to see picture control. That's not what you want. That allows you to select which picture control you're actually using. You want what's right below that on the second level, manage picture control and we are going to select save slash edit. And we are gonna be presented with all the default picture controls as a starting point. Now you would think that you could just choose any of these as a starting point, but I've discovered that they all have slightly different base settings. And so you'll get different results depending which one you choose. So I would recommend navigating down and choosing the flat picture profile as your starting point. All right, and I found this a little confusing at first because it just didn't get through my thick head. If you hit OK, that will take you to saving a copy of the picture control. Whereas if you hit the right button on your control pad, that will take you to making adjustments. Or the first option here is quick sharp. We're just gonna ignore that because that's kind of like a bulk adjustment of all the options down below and it won't give us what we want. So we're just gonna leave that alone and go down to sharpening. And we're going to set that to negative Three, because our goal here is to get as untouched of an image out of the camera as possible. And if you've ever tried to apply a sharpening filter to an already sharpened JPEG photo, you know that you can't push it very far. So we're gonna tell the camera not to do any sharpening to our image and instead let us sharpen it in post when we are editing it. So we're gonna bring that down to negative three. Moving down to mid-range sharpening, we are also going to move that down to negative five. I've had people ask me whether I'm sure that this isn't just adding like a unsharpened filter. I have tested this, that's not what's happening. When these settings are set to zero, the camera is applying a sharpened filter to the image to create a sharper image out of camera. And that is perfect for certain situations, but if we are wanting to replicate a cinema camera, we want to do that ourselves in post. Moving down to clarity, this setting you actually do want to keep at zero because if I move it down to negative five, this actually is adding a filter to the image. And this filter kind of creates a soft focus effect that is very, very difficult, if not completely impossible to totally correct in post. I've tried it, I made the mistake of keeping that on it does not work. So make sure you set clarity to zero. That is one of the reasons that quick sharp would not work for us because it would have lowered that setting. We are going to bring contrast down to negative three. And this is the most important setting for preserving your dynamic range. Once again, people have asked me, are you sure that you're actually getting a better dynamic range and not just applying a filter on top of something. Yes, I'm sure we are adjusting filters that are being applied to the footage before it is compressed to H.264. 
And in order to create more dynamic photos and videos out of the camera body, Nikon by default adds some contrast to make sure that the whites are right at the top and the blacks are right at the bottom to make a really punchy image where you will find that if you set this to negative three that when you're color grading you have a lot more room and make the subtle adjustments to get your footage just the way you want it when the environment is slower and it's more controlled than it is when you're recording on the field. Brightness, I generally like to leave this alone at zero. Saturation, we are going to set this to negative three. Saturation can lead to clipping as well and that's why we're bringing this down and when you bring your contrast back up in post in color grading that will naturally bring your saturation back. If you do find yourself having trouble in post with saturation getting the correct hues back you may want to bump that up to negative two instead of negative three. I like it at negative three. On my older cameras I definitely needed that to be more at negative two uh, sometimes even at negative one just to get accurate color readings. But with these newer cameras, I'm really impressed with how much color information is retained in that H.264 compression. It's definitely better than it used to be. Hue, we're gonna leave that alone as well. Leave that set at zero, and then we can hit okay. I'm gonna pick C1, because I don't have anything else on here right now. And I am going to name it. It can feel a little bit like typing on the Nintendo 64. You can use the touch screen, or you can use the control pad to move around. I am going to name it Z-L-O-G and then hit OK. And our Z log is saved. Now there is one more setting that we need to change. If we go back to the recording menu, we will go down one more level and set active D lighting to extra high. This setting improves the level of detail in highlights and shadow areas and under high contrast conditions. And I find that this really does help with preserving your dynamic range as well. And that's it, it's all set up. You should never really have to touch that again. But how do you use it? Let me show you. So on a day like today, the dynamic range really matters. We've got a bright sunshine on the snow. I'm wearing black. My face is in shadow, so how do we use and take advantage of this log that we've created to make sure we're getting the maximum dynamic range and the best color that we can? Because if you take this out right away, the first thing you're gonna notice is that everything's washed out and it can be a little bit hard to tell if your color's quite right and what your contrast ratio of shadows to highlights actually is. So the first thing we're gonna do when we're setting up our shot, getting our settings right, is navigate using a display button through the display modes and make sure we've got the historogram on screen. We're gonna make sure that as much of those waveforms are in the waveform as possible and try and make sure that those waveforms are center or just slightly right of center. And this is one of the advantages that an external video recorder gives you because they'll allow you to record untouched raw log footage while sending an image to your monitor that can have a custom LUT applied so you can kind of see what it might look like once you color grade it. That can be very handy for eyeballing color and contrast ratios and making sure things look right. We don't have that advantage with the Z30, but we can get close really quickly, very easily. And there are two options for doing it. The first option is to use the video photo dial and just switch between photo and video mode and make sure the settings are synchronized, except that you have our Z log applied and on the photo mode, you have something like portrait mode applied. So then you can just flick over to photo mode, check your exposure, set your white balance, and you know roughly what it's gonna look like. Flick back to video mode and you're ready to shoot. And if you don't shoot many photos while you're shooting video, you can even synchronize all of the settings except for picture control so that they're automatically the same between settings. And that's super easy, but if you're like me, I end up shooting a lot of photos while I'm shooting video for client work. And so I don't want those settings to be connected and it can be a little bit clunky. So what I have done is in the custom menu activated by the I button, I have made sure that I've got set picture control in there and then I can just navigate over to it and don't hit okay, but use the command dial and rotate to a picture control that has higher contrast and more saturation. So that's why I like to have the Z log as the last custom profile because then I can just rotate once to the right. Now I'm on automatic. That's enough to give me an idea what my color is doing. I can set my white balance. I can see what my contrast ratios are like, adjust my settings. Hit I again, rotate to the left. Now I'm back in Z log and ready to film. Super easy, super fast. Now let's go back inside. I'll take this footage, throw it in the computer and show you how to color grade it.
I'm gonna be grading my footage in DaVinci Resolve today. Really, any professional video editing software is gonna have color grading tools that are gonna do a really great job. So it won't be very difficult to translate this to your software of choice. And if somehow you don't have a software of choice, I will put a link to DaVinci Resolve below. There's a free version that gives you everything you're gonna see today for free. And it is one of the best color grading tools out there used by all kinds of Hollywood movies. But I digress. The first thing we need to do is bring the contrast back into our image. And I personally like to use the curves editor for this, but there are other tools like levels or using the lift and gain in your color wheels. That'll do the same thing. The first thing I'm gonna do is grab the handle on the left side, which is the shadow side, and just move that in until it kisses the exposure mountains. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to be fine tuning and adjusting these as you go. Usually I would just focus on editing one clip at a time. In this case, I've got six shots here, and that's just so you guys can see how this looks in different scenarios. Now that we've moved our blacks in, I'm gonna grab the right handle and move that in until it's right above where the mountains start. In this shot, you'll notice that there's a little tiny mountain down at the bottom right corner. That's actually the Christmas lights. And so I'm just gonna ignore that and just pull that right handle over until the big waveform starts. Now on this outside shot of me talking, I overexposed this, maybe because the lens flare, Maybe just because of operator error. Don't want to point any fingers there. And so we'll just leave the right handle alone since the waveform starts right away. And already you can see that the image looks 10 times better, but we are not going to stop there. Next, we want to make sure that contrast focuses where it really matters to us. And so I am going to add an S curve. This is a lot of eyeballing and finding where that S curve lands. I like to start by roughly finding the highlight point and then moving to the shadows point. And then just tweaking until, until it starts to feel right. Usually in a talking head shot, that's gonna mean that you want the upper S curve to be just above skin tone and the lower S curve point to be just below skin tone so that the highest contrast runs through your subject and then gently rolls off in the highlights and shadows. I find the highlights are the trickiest here and sometimes if they're just not looking right, if you're running into trouble, try adjusting the highest highlight point on the far right. Just move it back and forth. And oftentimes I'll find that, that that by itself will help me find the right exposure in the skin tones. So our contrast is looking good. And you'll notice that as we brought the contrast in, the saturation in the image actually came up, and in many cases to an acceptable level. But sometimes it's just not quite enough. And so I will add a little bit of saturation back into the image, usually five or 10 points. Much more than that, and it feels like too much. And sometimes I actually prefer the color boost instead of the saturation. I find that that brings in the colors in a way that I like it a little better. So play around with that. And now that we've got our color and our contrast where we like them, we can see where our white balance might have not been quite right. And we can make the necessary adjustments to get that sorted. I find the Nikon cameras tend to error a little bit towards green. Canon cameras tend to err a little bit towards magenta, and so you just might need to put a little bit of a nudge in the opposite direction for that to get skin tone that feels good. In the snow here, the snow is just a little bit warm, so it needs to be cooled off. And now we have some amazing looking footage that's ready for any other effects that we would like to add. For example, I always add a vignette. And in this shot where we overexposed, it actually helps to bring the sky in in the background where we had lost it previously. Because that's the advantage of using log is that even though we've brought the footage to what might be similar to a color image profile that we could have done in camera, we still have that information in the sky so we can add a mask and bring it back. We simply could not have done that if we had used say a, a portrait image profile. We would have lost that sky and there would have been no recovering it. Some people might be tempted to use this log footage as like, just in case they make a mistake with their exposure. And as we saw in my footage here, that can be true, but the purpose of log is not so that you can be sloppy. It's to expand your creative ability so that you can sit here in the editor when you've got the luxury of time and, and there isn't the time crunch pressures of being on set to actually tweak and finesse and be creative and play with the colors. For example, one thing I like to do is Go to hue versus hue here. Just tweak it a little bit to get the blues just where I want them. And then I'll go over to hue versus saturation and I will bump the saturation on those blues just up a little bit. You're gonna see that in almost all of my videos that are shot in this set. 
I just like the way it looks. And that's something I have the luxury of doing in post that would be very difficult for me to do on the day on set. And of course, this log footage is going to perform best in a controlled lit environment like this one, and it's not gonna make up for bad lighting. For example, if I was to turn off all of these lights and just turn on the house lights in here, let me do that. And of course this, this looks like garbage. My camera doesn't even know what to focus on anymore. The log footage is not gonna save you. You wanna have well lit footage to grade. And because I know lighting can be intimidating, I have made a video that will show you how to turn this into this. In under seven minutes, it may not seem like much time, but this is the easiest to understand lighting video on YouTube. It could change your life. It will blow your mind. <laughs> is that an oversell? I don't know. Only one way to find out.